and girls, welcome to my show, The Mr. Peavy Show. I am going to read you a book. The name of the book is called Jojo Flying Sidekick, written and illustrated by Brian Pickney. Okay, boys and girls, so we're going to get started. To do a flying sidekick, Master Kim explains. Let's start to read the book. I always remember when the stars fell down around me and lifted me up above the George Washington Bridge to see our tiny rooftop with Mommy and Daddy and Mr. and Mrs. Honey, our next door neighbors, still playing cards as if nothing was going on. And Phoebe, my baby brother, lying real still on the mattress, just like I told him to. His eyes like huge floodlights tracking me through the sky. Sleeping on Tar Beach was magical. Lying on the roof in the night with stars and skyscraper building all around me made me feel rich, like I owned all that I could see. The bridge was my most prized possession. Daddy said that the George Washington Bridge is the longest and most beautiful bridge in the world and that it opened in 1931, on the very day I was born. Daddy worked on that bridge, hoisting cables. Since then, I've wanted that bridge to be mine. Now I have claimed it. All I had to do was to fly over it to be mine forever. I can wear it like a giant diamond necklace or just fly above it and marvel at its sparkling beauty. I can fly, yes, fly, me, Cassie Louise Lightfoot, only eight years old in the third grade and I can fly. That means I am free to go wherever I want to for the rest of my life. Daddy took me to see the new union building he was working on. He can walk on steel girders high up in the sky and not fall. They call him the cat. He'll be rich and won't have to stand on, on 24 story high girls and look down. He can look at his building going up. And mommy won't cry all winter when he goes to look for work and doesn't come home. I'm going to fly over the ice cream factory just to make sure we do. Okay, boys and girls, that's all I'm going to read to you. Make sure you go to the public library and get Tar Beach by Fate Ringo. Okay, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mr. Peavy. Welcome to my show. I have a very special guest. His name is David Groom. Mr. Grooms, what do you do? I'm a computer administrator and computer support technician. What does that, that person do? Normally, I set up people's computers and connect them to the uh, internet so that they can get their jobs done. How long have you been doing this job? Oh, I'd say about 10 years now. Did your education help you with this job? Yes, somewhat in an indirect manner. I was trained as a mechanical engineering, but it helps a person to think in a technical fashion so that they can do this sort of job. Oh, okay. Uh, when did you when did you start doing this job? What year? Uh, 1989 was when oh, I started. Oh, so you've been doing this for a long time. Okay, uh, Mr. Grooms, what some of the things you do every day on your job? Name some examples of things you do. I, yesterday I installed a computer printer for a person that had an emergency. I set up a new computer for two new users and had to reset a person's password. Okay, so in other words, you help everybody uh, uh, that have problems with their computer. Have, do, can you build a computer? Yes, I can, Mr. Peavy. I've built quite a few of them from parts that you can get at computer stores or through mail order off the internet. So if I want to be do your job, what do I need to go, where, what kind of subjects do I need to take in school? In general, general courses, 
are very good to have. Then if you took computer courses, that would help out tremendously. But the biggest thing that's the most important is that you have somewhat of a uh, technical, technically minded uh, way of thinking and the ability to understand stuff that's put in front of you. Okay, so if you build a computer, how long does it take you to build a computer? I can put a computer together in about five hours time with software installed. That's wonderful. So basically, you went to school. Did you go to college? Yes, I did, Mr. What Kruby. college did you go attend? University of Cincinnati. Fantastic. I think I have someone else, a friend of mine, who's going to University of Cincinnati. Who's that? Uh, it's a person by the name of Ardella Relliford. She wants to go back to school and become a uh, teacher, uh, an art teacher. Well, believe it or not, Mr. Peavy, I know Ardella Relliford. She's a very you good do? friend of mine. Yes, oh, I do. Okay, she's a good friend of mine, too. She wrote a book about me. I've read that book. You have? Fantastic! Did you? So I'm thinking about writing another book too. What's it going to be called? I haven't had. A, I haven't really thought about what's the name of my book's going to be, but I'm going to write it pretty soon with Miss Relliford. That's very interesting, Mr. Peavy. So I'm glad you read my book. So what are your hobbies, uh, Mr. Grooms? Well, I'm into astronomy and boating, uh, bicycle riding and I take walks through the woods, things like that. So with astronomy, um, I understand that you're also a member of a club that has something to do with astronomy? Do you, are you? I was a member of the Dayton Astronomical Society. Fantastic, They're fantastic, because I remember Miss Rilbert told me years ago that she went to see um, I think it was a museum where you, there was a gigantic telescope and she saw the planet, I think it was, what was the planet, uh, do you remember Mr. Grooms? Was uh, it Jupiter? We were looking at Jupiter at the time, Fantastic. yes. Fantastic! And boys and girls, that's really fun uh, to do that. Uh, to be an astronomy, uh, uh, you have to go to school or can you do that uh, by reading books and things, Mr. Grooms? You can get a lot of information about astronomy from reading books. For an amateur such as myself, books are fine. If you wanted to become a professional, you would definitely have to go to school. Okay, also let's get back, on to, uh, back to the computers. Now, if the boys and girls, um, for your, you're telling the boys and girls they need to go to school and probably go to college to be a computer tech, but also you, there's technical schools they can go to. Yes, there are. Uh, I've, Sinclair has, uh, a very good associates program for computer technology. Uh, Clark State University is a, a two-year college also that provides uh, training. Uh, who else in this area that I can think of? Fantastic. Now, but boys and girls need to stay in school. They need to graduate from high school, definitely, in order to become a computer tech. And by being a computer tech, they'll be able to uh, repair computers, build computers, and also they will be able to make uh, lots of money, won't they, Mr. Grooms? That's true, they will. Fantastic. So boys and girls, uh, stay in school and uh, learn and read everything about computers if you want to be a computer tech. So, Mr. Grooms, thank you for being on my show. Thank You're you. Fantastic. Thank you. For having me, Mr. Thank Peavy. You. Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Peavy. I'm at Cape Canaveral with my friends. There's Robert and Ardella in Virginia. And we're, we're going to the Cape Kennedy Center. And there's my friend Robert, and there's Virginia. And we're walking to Cape Kennedy. Boys and girls, you notice those are rockets. Those are the rockets that the astronauts used to take off in space. We're walking up to the entrance of the Cape Kennedy in Orlando, Florida, boys and girls. It's my friend Robert, and we're walking. We're walking rather slow, boys and girls, aren't we? And uh, we're walking up there, and there's a sign. We're going to approach a sign at Cape Kennedy uh, Space Center. 
Boys and girls, there's Robert. He's in the way. There's Virginia. She's going to move so we can read the sign. Thank you, Virginia. Space, Kennedy Space Center. Our mission to tell the NASA story and inspire all people to support the exploration of space. Isn't that wonderful, boys and girls? Now, we're going to go on, on, walking on to the notice. You see the, the rockets from this uh, distance. There's really, really tall rockets, boys and girls. Maybe, and there's an astronaut that's actually um, the outfit some of the astronauts wear in space. Their helmet, and you see, okay, and we also, now we're inside the John F. Kennedy Space Center. John F. Kennedy was a, a president and we're inside the Space Center, and it was named after John F. Kennedy because he started the space program way back in the 1960s, boys and girls. So right now, we're gonna, gonna go and look at all the exhibits. There you go, it says John F. Kennedy. And then right now, boys and girls, there's a rocket ship. And this is a Universal Theater. And we're approaching what is called the Rocket Garden. Boys and girls, it's actually a garden that has lots of different types of rockets. There are some, some rockets there, boys and girls, that astronauts actually took off in space with. Uh, Mr. Peavy is sort of claustrophobic, so I don't think I'll be able to get inside a rocket ship, but maybe one of you could uh, take off in space. Now we're walking to the rocket garden. Isn't that neat, boys and girls? It's just like flowers. Now here I am in, in an actual space, next to a space capsule. This is what an astronaut actually got inside and went into space, boys and girls. Isn't that neat? So we're standing here in front of a, a, a space capsule, and we're gonna go. And then we're standing here and see these the uh, the rockets where the where the uh, jet. I guess the jet propulsion when it blasts off, you see all this smoke and fire comes out. Those two little things there. So right now we're standing here, and. We're, we're looking at, see how big that rocket is, boys and girls? That is a huge rocket. It's almost like a big, 10-story a, a building, about as big as a 10-story building. That is a huge rocket. That is absolutely fantastic, boys and girls. Now, we're inside of a space capsule. See how small this is, boys and girls? I'm inside the space capsule with my friend Ardella, and we're uh, looking at all the things inside. It's really small. It's barely fit me and my friend, uh, and we're sitting here, and pretty soon we'll see all the gadgets and things that the astronaut had to know when they're in the space. All this panel here, they had to train and go to school, boys and girls, to learn all these things and how to take off in space. Those are lots of panels, boys and girls, lots of things you need to read and need to know what to do. That's why you need to stay in school. Please stay in school, and you can be an astronaut, too. Because right now, we need uh, good astronauts, and all you need to do is finish school. Now, here's another one, a two type for two. It's a Gemini 7. Frank Borman was in this Gemini 7, and Jim Lovell. And here's another one. Here's another uh, plaque aiming at the heavens, boys and girls, because they go straight up in the sky. So this is really... Um, uh, something that you all, if you get a chance to, to go, go to the uh, Cape Canaveral and visit. Okay, here I am in front of the plaque with my friend, and you notice uh, the, the ro rocket boosters. You see uh, beneath the plaque where the rocket propulsion blasts off with the fire and, and, and the smoke and stuff when you see the rocket uh, blast off, boys and girls. So we're going to go over here, and there's another rocket. Isn't that a big rocket, boys and girls? You see it says United States. Isn't that huge? And there are also jobs for people to build rocket ships. You may want to grow up, boys and girls, to build a rocket ship. This is really exciting. Okay, boys and girls, so that's all we have it for today. We're at Cape Kennedy. Hey, I'm Bob Over the Clown. Welcome. My laboratory to let... Uh, uh, okay, well, oh, that's right, wait, wait, that's right. We're supposed to be talking about flight. That's right, I'm in my laboratory talking about flight. We're gonna talk about flight. There's a special celebration going on in Dayton, Ohio right now that is all about the Wright brothers in flight. Okay, okay, so we're, what we're we gonna do, we're gonna make a gyrocopter out of paper, okay? And if you can see this over here, 
I got a magic gyrocopter here. Sometimes you can see through the gyrocopter. But okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to send you a pattern for a gyrocopter if you write, send a self a dram, says a dram. Oh, I'll, 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 your, your mouth is gonna blah, blah, blah. Okay, self address stamp envelope to the address below the screen. And we will send you a pattern to make a gyrocopter. Actually, we may have plenty of uh, gyrocopters. You probably make maybe uh, 10 gyrocopters uh, uh, from one pattern. Okay, we've got the patterns are, are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so it's very simple to do this. Okay, now, a gyrocopter. What's a gyrocopter? A gyrocopter is an aircraft that obtains its lift from rotating air folds, just like a helicopter. The word uh, gyro means rotating or spiral. Material for the gyrocopter, we need, of course, the pattern, okay? And we need a pair of scissors, okay? And a paper clip. Can you see this paper clip? It may disappear, yes, a disappearing paper clip there. Okay, let me see you have this paper clip. Can you see this paper clip, boys and girls? Okay, if not, we need a paper clip, okay? Now, oh, okay, boys and girls, do you remember the four uh, forces of uh, flight? Okay, thrust, drag, oh, lift, oh, and gravity. Oh, gravity brings you down, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut out our gyrocopter. So what we need to do, remember the, um, ooh, disappearing paper, <laughs> disappearing paper. Let's bring this over so we can see it. Okay, can we see that? Boys and girls, okay, but well, what we're gonna do is when you get your pattern, you're, you'll be able to see the lines which you need to cut out, cut out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out on the bold line, the bold, bold black line, not the uh, broken line, okay? Okay, boys and girls, like I said, if you send away uh, a self address stamp envelope, we will send you a pattern of the gyrocopter. Now, next we need to cut out our gyrocopter, okay, where you get your pattern. So we're gonna stay on the thick black line. Okay, I'm trying to hold it down. Yeah, I'm holding it down here. And you cut that out, boys and girls. And then you, um, this is disappearing here. So we got that white paper, okay. So what we're gonna do is, boys and girls, we're going to cut on the uh, lines. We're gonna start with A, okay? And then you should have, um, boys and girls, you should have on your pattern, should be marked where you cut. So don't worry if you cannot see it here, you'll be able to see it when you get your order your pattern, okay? You cut there, then you cut on the other side. B, okay, you make a slit on B. Then you also uh, make a slit on D. You turn around on D. It has all. It has the. Um, it has the uh, line. The, the numbers labeled. Okay. Okay. Then you're gonna fold D. In the opposite direction, you're gonna fold, fold E. Okay. Now, also you're gonna start with. Boys and girls, as I said, if you send. Uh, a self-addressed stamp envelope, we will send you a pattern for our gyrocopter. Now, boys and girls, what you need to do is your pattern will be marked A, B, C, D, and uh, A, B, C, D. And what we need to do is, first of all, I want you to cut on the A slit, okay, here, and you're gonna cut here, then you're gonna turn your paper around, and you're gonna cut here, and there on the B slit, okay? And after you cut on a B slip, I want you to cut on the uh, C slip here. Okay, and there. And then you're gonna cut on the B slip, D and E slip, I'm sorry, D and E slip. Okay. Dotted lines that we're gonna fold, so I want you to fold on A line. And you're going to turn and you're going to fold on the B line, boys and girls. Be very careful. Try to fold on the line there. And then you're going to um, fold just the opposite. The uh, D, we go in one direction and the E. And 
you're going to fold this, and you're going to fold it up like so. Clip. And you have your jump. Let's see if we can get it to fly. Oops, almost. 